Hello and welcome to Gadget Joe and today we take a look at Firmaltech's Flow 240 all-in-one cooler. The Flow 240 is part of Firmaltech's latest all-in-one cooling solutions range and we're going to put it through its paces to see how well it performs compared to the standard stock air cooler provided by AMD. For now, let's take a look at the unboxing experience and it's business as usual for Thermaltake with their signature black box with a nice vibrant image of a cooler on the front showing off the RGB functionality and the socket support and software information and details on the back of a box. Opening the box you get instruction guides for mounting and for the software. In a cardboard box you get two 120mm fans, a bag of mounting plates, sync cables, sync controller, the unit itself and of course the warranty card. Let's take away everything else for now and focus on the AIO itself. First of all you get this connector cable that plugs into your CPU fan port. This cable connects to the sync controller. The CPU block itself is an attractive one at that with a circular copper plate that is held in place with multiple screws securing the block in place and a round thermal pad for contact with the CPU. The contact plate is very highly machined with a very nice smooth finish that has no visible imperfections. Moving on to the tubing of the cooler you get a real high quality sleeved hosing with a firm rubber grip on the fittings. The radiator itself is nice and slim at just 27mm meaning it will fit in most cases with minimum obtrusion. The radiator is a highly efficient unit with very fine design but doubles for cooling surface area and also has space for mounting up to four 120mm fans too. The CPU block is a substantial yet compact single piece of plastic that houses the pump too, which provides for circulation for the entire loop. The TT logo sits proud inside a circle that all lights up in sync with the fans using the controller. In the bags included in the box you get a bag containing mounting plates for holding the cooler into place and multiple screws for mounting the block into the correct sockets. You get screws for both AMD, AM4 and Intel 2066 sockets. A bag of mounting screws for the fans to the radiator, fixing screws and a soft sticky foam pad for dampening vibration and sound from the radiator. The mounting brackets are made from both plastic for the base plate and metal for the top securing bracket that holds the block in place. Now before we go into the performance of the cooler and the lighting modes, we are going to go through the installation process. For our testing we use the ROG Strix B350F gaming motherboard by ASUS AMD Ryzen 7 1700X, 16GB of HyperX Predator DDR4 RAM, Radeon RX 480, Firmaltake Tough Power i8 50W RGB PSU, all housed within the stunning Firmaltake View 32 tempered glass RGB case. Mounting the fans to the radiator is a simple process and all you have to do is get the fans you need, place them onto the desired side of the radiator you wish to mount them, depending on which way you will mount it all within your case. And using these longer screws, simply line them up with the holes pre-drilled on the unit and screw them into place. The rubber pads on the fans will prevent any vibrations and noise. Once you have them in place you are good to go for mounting the radiator in your case. Using the smaller screws and washers you simply mount the radiator to the location of your choice and screw it into place. Before you mount it into your case however, you are going to need to install the cooler and pump itself onto the motherboard. So let's get started and you need to remove these four screws that hold the stock Wraith cooler on the board or any other installed coolers you may already have. Remember to keep hold of these in a secure place for future references. Next you take this bag of screws named AM4 and then secure these onto the existing bracket base screws. Make sure to have them hand tight only so not to damage the board itself. For the block itself you need to take this bracket and slide it over these grooves here and it simply twists and locks into place. Now you are ready to mount this to the CPU. On the base plate it comes with a pre-done thermal pad that goes in direct contact with the IHS of the CPU. You can of course remove this and use your own paste if desired. Now that it's in place, you take these screws and then screw the whole block into place like this. 
once again, go hand tight and don't put too much pressure on. The block will now be sat firmly and securely in place and you need to take the pump connector and place it in the correct pump header. As for this extra cable, you can connect it to the sync controller. The sync controller works much like we have shown before. You insert the fans and the CPU block into the controller making sure to take notice of the order you put them in to ensure maximum lighting flow and effects. Once you have them all plugged in, you can connect the PWM to Molex power connector cable and the PC PWM sync cable afterwards. Plug this cable into the PC and power it up and all the lighting will light up and be recognised on the TT RGB software. Once you have everything mounted and in place within your case, you are good to go. The Flow AIO range all feature Thermal Takes Lighting Software Synchronization, which means that you can sync all connected devices to create many fantastic light shows. If you want to learn more about the colour modes available, be sure to check the video out in the top right. Fully installed and powered up, the Flow AIO looks fantastic and the LED lighting on the top of the pump certainly fits in very nicely and will complement any build with that certain wow factor guaranteed. Now that we have installed the cooler we can focus on the important bit, the performance. We tested it using the same components mentioned previously and tested it under idle, low during video rendering both 1080 and 4K, during gameplay of Tomb Raider, GTA 5 and Fortnite. We put it against the stock Ryzen Wraith cooler and Thermal Takes Ring Pro 12 air cooler to see the result achieved from each. As you can see from the results, the Wraith cooler actually performed pretty decent for a stock cooler, with the Ring Pro 12 keeping it around 1-3% to cooler and rather expectedly, the Flow AIO managed to come in at a consistent 4-5% to cooler than the Wraith Air solution which shows the superior cooling capabilities of water cooling over air cooled options. The Flow 240 has managed to maintain the temperature at a consistent level and during the 48 hours of testing the cooler, there were very few, if any, fluctuations in temperature. And that pretty much wraps up our unboxing, review and installation guide of the Flow AIO series by Thermaltake. A very strong performer with looks that would suit any modern build and striking yet relatively subtle RGB lighting on the pump block itself with quality components, housing and fittings used have awarded the Thermaltake Flow AIO Liquid Cooler our gold 4 star gadget bureau rating. As always, I will leave a link down below in the comments as to where you can get your hands on your very own cooler or any of the other products used in this video. And if you liked this video, leave a thumbs up. If you dislike it, leave a thumbs down. And don't forget to hit subscribe while you're at it for much more content like this and regular giveaways and more. And that's goodbye from me for now, and I'll see you in the next video.